Hell yeah! What is going on, everybody? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is D Ken, and welcome to my incredible podcast. Now, before we commence this episode, do not forget to hook smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, share this with your boys and your families, follow me on Instagram smash that bell notification button and of course as always enjoy let's get started our top story for today shall be the tiktok star named ali abulaban stands accused of murdering two people his wife and his wife's friend that's right you heard me right every single news network is going nuts over this specific story now when you hear a female that has a so-called friend what's the first thing that you will think well i can assure you the answer is very simple there is something going on between his wife and her so-called friend perhaps they were seeing each other for quite some time perhaps they slept together and she's trying to cover it up with lies i believe that it is reasonable to assume that ali picked up clues along the way that suggested that something was going on between his wife and her so-called friend eventually he did find out that his wife and her friend were doing more than just seeing each other they must have slept together regardless of the fucking fact that ali and his wife at that time had a child i shall repeat that one more time ali's wife and her so-called friend fucked the shit out of each other despite the fact that ali and his wife have a child <laughs> Folks, we have a lot to discuss about this. Here's what we're going to do. First, I shall present to you certain footages. The first footage is where Ali speaks to the Fox Network face-to-face while sitting behind the glass. And the second footage is where it goes into detail about Ali allegedly placing a bug in his daughter's iPad before the murder occurred. So with that said, let's take a look. Now to a story you'll see first on Fox 5, a jailhouse interview with a rising TikTok star accused of double murder. Ali Abulaba, husband, father, TikTok star, and also accused of double murder. Now, I think it would be wise of me to inform all of you that this is where things start looking very ugly. Folks, viewer discretion is advised. Let's continue. Did you kill her? He's referring to the deaths of his estranged wife, Anna Abulaban, and her friend, Rayburn Barrett. They were shot dead October 21st in an East Village high-rise. Prosecutors say just days prior, Anna kicked Ali out of their home. So he installed a listening device on their daughter's iPad and used it to spy on his wife. That's when you know that something happened. Personally, I am grateful that i was never in this position ever in my life like this is one of the worst positions to be in your life so i do not blame ali for installing an audio device on his daughter's ipad because that's his home too ladies and gentlemen we need to ask ourselves this fucking question what right did anna have to kick her husband out of their home the home that he is paying the fucking rent for he was the guy that paid all of the bills the rent he was the guy that put four walls and a roof over her head and their daughter's head he provided all of these things and this is the treatment that this guy gets for being a good man or just like coach greg adams would say you're such a good man you know while patting your head this is the treatment that he gets okay because look how she treated this guy that gave this cunt a child anyways let's continue when you heard rayburn's voice you went to i didn't recognize him i didn't know who it was but what were you thinking i was freaking out oh my god i caught her i caught her oh my god oh my god there's a man there's a man and then guess what i hear what happened 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 Okay, change of plans. At this point, I'm going to show you the second footage. I'm I'm only going to show you the key details. And after that, I will continue on giving my critique about the main footage. Let's take a look of the second footage. (laughs) 
So this is where he stands. After finding out that his wife at that time turned out to be this narcissistic 304 that belongs to the streets. She belongs to the streets. After kicking him out of their home, or let me say it like this, after kicking him out of the home that he was paying all of the bills for, this is how the story ended. I do hope that his daughter is okay. Like, I sincerely hope that one day she will understand why he did it. When she does grow up to understand this, she will look at her mother in a different light. And one day, I hope she will understand just how much of an egocentric, self-centered, and narcissistic 304 that her mother was. I truly hope that she will find out one day. As for Ali, like, words cannot express how bad I feel for this guy. Like, unfortunately for him... He came across a female that he should not have married in the first place. He was definitely one of the good guys that got taken advantage of by this 304. So that means this teaches us that we cannot trust these females anymore. We cannot trust any of them anymore. I do not know about any of you guys that are listening to this, but I am grateful that I am living the free agent lifestyle, which means... I'm a 26-year-old single man living alone. I've got my own place. I just bought my first car not too long ago. I am applying for all sorts of apprenticeships. Gentlemen, here's my point. You have got to stop wifing up these 304s. Stop thinking with your schlongs and start thinking with your minds, okay? That's what's going to save your lives one day, okay? Stop letting your emotions override your control. These females do not deserve to be wifed up, okay? Look at the situation that Ali is in right now. He is facing the death penalty. I don't think y'all understand what that means, okay? Death. You know what? Uh, let me resume this rant during the conclusion phase, okay? Let's continue on with the main footage. driving to the apartment. I'm driving, I'm I'm what happens when you get to the apartment? I got up and I see them. What did you think? What did you think? Before I continue any further, notice how he chose to speak to Fox on national fucking television. I repeat, live on national television. Folks, you need to understand this. As a plaintiff or the defendant of any case in existence, you are not, I repeat, you are not obligated to speak to anybody about your fucking case. The only people that have the legal authority to know the details about the case are the cops, or should I say the detectives primarily, the district attorneys, defense attorneys, and the judges, okay? That's it. Anybody outside of those positions, they are not required to know anything about your case. So, tell you what. This L is going directly to Ali because I would not have done that under any circumstances. If I was being accused of any crime whatsoever, here's what I would have done. I would have sat in my cell. I would have remained 100% silent at all times. I would only take legal advice from my attorney. I would only speak when my attorney is present when the authority is communicating with me in person. That's it. Very simple. Let's continue. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be brutally honest with you, and I shall speak from a legal standpoint. I honestly believe that Ali is not guilty of murder because Ali thought that his daughter was in danger. He thought that Ali's wife's friend was going to bring harm to Ali's daughter. His wife had the audacity to kick Ali out of their home. I, I rep I'm going to phrase it this way. The home that Ali was paying all of the bills for invites this so-called friend over to their home she chose to spread her legs for this friend this despite the fucking fact that she chose to have a child with ali she completely threw all of that away just to be with this so-called friend she had the audacity to throw all of that away just to spread her legs for this chad brad tyrone or, or whatever his name is and look how this situation ended in a bloodbath and here is my response to ali Bravo 
to Mr. Ali Abu Laban of restoring order for the Manosphere. Again, from a legal standpoint, Ali does not deserve to be locked up in prison, let alone face the death sentence, okay? This guy's purely innocent because he thought his daughter was in danger the whole time. Let, let's create a hypothetical situation. Let's say I was married to a physically attractive blonde and I have kids with her. Now, let's say I come back home from a different state because of work. I come back to my house that I'm paying the bills for, just keep that in mind, and I see my wife in bed with another man. I would have done the same thing that Ali did with his wife. I dare my hypothetical wife. I dare her to bring another man into my house, my fucking place of zen and peace, the place that I'm paying the bills for. I would have definitely pulled out my sidearm and shoot them down on the spot. Now, here's the part that will hurt me the most. The kids will eventually get dragged into this, okay? All of the drama that will go down, the kids will see everything that is going down. My point is this. Ali Abulaban is 100% innocent because he didn't know who his wife's friend was. Like he said, he did not recognize the friend. In addition to that, Anna had no fucking right to kick Ali out of their home. How dare she kick him out of their home? Y you know what? Uh, let's continue on with the video. Prosecutors say Ali confessed to both police and his mother that he killed his wife and Rayburn and accused his wife of cheating. Though at this time, prosecutors say Rayburn was just a friend. Okay, hold the fuck on. Let's pause this for a moment. The female narrator said, and I quote, Prosecutors say Rayburn was just a friend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand that the prosecution is trying to bury an innocent man? This is another part that pisses me off a lot. The prosecution, the media, and all of these leftist morons are pointing their fingers at Ali, and they believe that this guy should suffer with the death penalty. Folks, you must understand something. You must remain fair and impartial towards both sides. Well, I am looking at both sides, and I can tell you right now, what Ali's wife did was simply unforgivable, and the way the prosecution is handling this case is unsatisfactory. It is unacceptable. They are trying to bury an innocent man who wanted a normal life. He is not the one at fault here. Anyways, let's proceed. He says he and Anna grew apart after they settled in San Diego. He blames the move and their lifestyle choices for ruining their marriage. What Ali meant by that was that she was the problem. She was the reason as to why their marriage failed. Moving on. says Anna partied too much, but when we spoke to Anna's childhood friend and Ali's cousin, they painted a different picture. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> now, this is the part where Anna's friend and even one of Ali's cousin will start throwing all sorts of emotional allegations against Ali. Let's see what they have to say. He's a bad guy. There's nothing good about him. He's selfish. That's all I can say is selfish. Pulls out like a full bag of cocaine. Not like a little bag, a big bag. And we're like, you know, are you trying to get us all in trouble? He goes, I'm Jin Kid. I can do whatever I want. Nobody can touch me. I'm Jin Kid. <laughs> oh. So let me get this straight. Ali is a bad guy. There's nothing good about him. He is selfish. Well, what makes him a bad person? Why does Casey believe that he's selfish? Why? He literally moved with Anna from Virginia all the way to San Diego because San Diego was the place that she wanted to go. She wanted to go to San Diego. So because of that, he was willing to move his whole life, including the love of his life, from Virginia to San Diego so that she can live a fucking luxurious lifestyle. <laughs> Oh, but he's a bad guy. There's nothing good about him. He's selfish. Mind you, he went out of his way to give his former love of his life a child. He gave her a daughter, 
and look how she treated him. On top of that, notice how Ali said that she partied too much. So that means that she wanted to have lots of girls nights out. That does bring up several questions. Why in the fuck did you marry a female that loves having girls nights out on a frequent basis? Why in the fuck did you give a creature like Anna a child? She was out there living the 304 lifestyle and you gave her a child. And let me guess, you did not like the fact that she wanted to have girls nights out and she said to Ali, he is controlling and insecure. The solution is very simple. Gentlemen, you need to stop investing time, stamina, and resources with these females that want to go out there and live the 304 lifestyle. Anyways, moving on. Your family says that your social media fame changed you. They say that you were doing cocaine, didn't really care about the consequences. Are they right? That's false. My family doesn't know anything because they never cared. Folks, listen. I understand that cocaine possession is a crime, okay? Like, matter of fact, I took the time to look this up under the California Penal Code HS11350 Alpha, okay? It's against the law to have cocaine in your possession, okay? We understand that's a misdemeanor. Here is what I will say. It's possible that Ali was intaking coke because he was going through a lot of shit with his wife. Like, maybe he was going through a lot of things. In no way am I saying that snorting coke is okay, okay? I am not defending Ali's decision of snorting that shit in his nose, okay? I was only suggesting that he was intaking coke as a coping mechanism, okay? Moving on. I asked again about his cocaine use. Do you think that made you snap? Do you think it changed you? Prosecutors say Anna was planning to file a restraining order and that Ali has a history of domestic violence, something Anna's best friend confirms, even though Ali denies ever hitting Anna. Let's take a few steps back and really analyze this from a distance. Let's be real here. Nowadays, females in general love to paint the picture where they are the victims and the men are the perpetrators. Here's how it really goes. Females in general are the instigators of domestic violence and the men are the real victims. I am certain that at least most of you have watched several TikTok videos where it shows a female striking a guy with her bare hands, which is assault. This is what TikTok is promoting on behalf of these narcissistic females. This society seriously believes that it's okay for females to hit a guy and she can get away with it whenever she wants. But when a guy hits a female, regardless if it's self-defense or for the sake of malice, everybody wants to go after him just because they believe that a guy cannot hit a female. You know what? Let's do this. Let's say that Ali did strike his own wife. Okay, let's say that he's guilty of domestic violence. During this whole YouTube video by Fox 5 San Diego, and I watched the whole thing, here's a question. During the whole video, did they ever show a video or photos that can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Ali assaulted Anna? Did they? Mm, nope. No, they don't. So because of that, I find Casey's story hard to believe. Let's proceed. Were you feeling any remorse about this situation? So Ali knew what the solution was. He knew that the solution was to leave her because she was becoming one hell of a problem to Ali. He knew what to do. However, he chose not to control himself. He invested too much of his time, his emotions, his stamina, and his resources into this female. And look how this ended. Moving on. Okay, tell you what, folks, I think we have seen quite enough of Jin Kid's situation. Therefore, here are some things that we can learn from this. One, whether if he's really guilty or not guilty, 
Unfortunately for him, that's for the court to decide. And let's not forget the jury, of course. Personally, if I wake up sometime down the road and find that the court finds this guy guilty of two counts of murder, I will be fucking shocked. Because, and I've already said this, this guy thought that his daughter was in danger. I believe that he is not guilty of murder. Two, I am getting fucking sick, tired, and exhausted of the media trying to paint the picture where this guy deserves to go to prison for murdering his wife. Fuck this guy. He committed murder. He's a domestic violence abuser. He abused his wife. Leo. I am tired of hearing that stupid rationale, okay? Just throw that out the window. Three, stop wifing up these 304s that belong to the streets. She belongs to the streets. And leave them in the streets, okay? They belong there. Remember this saying, folks. Do not pick up another man's trash. Do not do that, okay? Leave that trash for the raccoons, okay? Four, stop thinking with your schlong and think with your minds because you have the ability to make smart decisions in order to save your fucking lives. Five, in addition to my third point, this is my fifth point. Stop having children with these 304s. That makes your situation even worse. You're only digging yourself a deeper hole and that will literally turn into your grave. Stop doing that and start making smarter decisions. So with all of that said, this concludes this episode of my incredible podcast. So thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to hook smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Share this with your boys and your families. Follow me on Instagram. Smash that bell notification button. And every single one of you have a wonderful and blessed day. Peace out.